Hello YouTube, it's Jim Chapman with the American Air Gun Hunter. Today I'm going to give you a video on the five reasons why I think spring piston air guns are still a great hunting tool. This week I'm going to be talking about something that I've been asked a lot of questions about recently and that is hunting with spring piston air guns. Besides the mail I've been receiving, I've uh, put out a, a poll on my channel and uh, uh, spring piston air guns came up a lot. It's not surprising when you think about the fact that in the U.S. anyway, anytime you go into a sporting goods store, there are spring piston air guns for sale. By far and away, spring piston air guns are sold more across the U.S. and used more for pest control and hunting than any other type of air gun. I've never quit using my spring piston air gun. So why would you want to hunt with a, a spring piston air gun? Well, I'll come back to that and I'll talk about it a bit more uh, later, but I think there are some very sound reasons for it. Now the scope of what I'm going to do today is not to go through in detail the technologies and how spring piston air guns work. Um, essentially there are different ways of cocking them, there are different mechanisms for uh, implementing them. You've got a compression chamber, you've got a piston. You compress the, the uh, spring and a sear holds it in place. The piston is retracted in the, in the compression tube. When you pull the trigger, the sears release, the spring decompresses, pushes the piston up into the uh, compression chamber, and it pushes that volume of air, compresses it, and then it ejects it down through the, uh, the barrel of the gun. Simple terms, that's how it's worked. Now, in terms of how guns are cocked, there are really three basic mechanisms for that. There's a side lever cocking, uh, which cocks off the, the side of the gun. There's an under lever with a, an extra cocking rod underneath that's pulled down or there's the brake barrel. And brake barrel is what is the most commonly used type. And that's where the barrel breaks and the spring is compressed by pulling this down. You might have heard about recoil and air gun. Uh, and that seems counterintuitive to a lot of people. They think an air gun? Just an air gun. There's no recoil. But there is and, and it's different than that in the firearm. And the reason that it's different is you get the same type of recoil pushing back against you as that piston starts to move forward and the air is compressed. And, and that is much lighter than what you would get with a, a center fire rifle, for instance. Uh, but the other part is when that piston finally slams home at the end of the compression chamber, it moves the gun forward. So you get this bi-directional uh, recoil. And there are two things. This bi-directional recoil would eat scopes like crazy. People would put firearm scopes on their, their guns, on their spring piston guns, and it would destroy them. And that doesn't happen so much nowadays, partially because the guns, have, they've smoothed out the actions, they've really refined it. And secondly, uh, people are using um, uh, uh, Springer rated uh, scopes mostly on their guns. But anyway, there is a practical element to that. And, and that practical element is that this bi-directional recoil makes the hold uh, sensitivity on the spring piston guns pretty significant. And for that reason, your shooting technique has to be pretty consistent to get consistent results with shooting. And Now one of the things that, uh, that I mentioned that is affected is the hold sensitivity. So let's say we, uh, we cock this gun and you never want to dry fire a springer. You can uh, damage the spring in doing that. Now because of that recoil there's a very specific way that I hold my spring piston air guns when I'm shooting offhand especially. So let's first say we cock the gun. Okay, when you cock it, hang on to the barrel when you're putting a pellet in don't take a chance of it snapping back and getting your fingers. Load directly into the port. Shut. Now, when you shoot with spring piston, what I do, what I do is I keep it more or less in open hand. I may rest my hand around, but I'm not holding it. I'm just resting it in my hand. That way, when I squeeze the trigger, I allow it to move. So I'm, I'm not gripping it tightly, uh, but that's how I hold the gun. Now, one of the things that you may have heard, and I, I've heard this a lot, is that, oh, I can't, I can't get my gun sighted in. I'm shooting off a, a rest and it's jumping all over the place. Well, part of the problem is that hold sensitivity. If you've got this mounted very tightly against that, that rest, point of impact will shift. So when I'm shooting off a rest, to get sighted in, for instance, I'll cock the gun, get a pellet. I rest the gun on my open hand. So instead of going right on the rest of that same loose grip, so my hand's wrapped around it, but I'm not holding it tightly. When you do that, 
You'll see your groups tightening up. This gun has a lot of things I like. I, you know, power is not the reason you're hunting with an air gun. I mean, even the more powerful air guns are less than a 22 long rifle. It's all about precision. And this gun is only putting out about, the way it's tuned right now, about 13 or 14 foot-pound. So it's still just slightly over a legal limit for the UK, but it's, it's about as low as you're going to see over here. And I've taken literally hundreds of rabbits, ground squirrels, uh, uh, pigeons, Eurasian doves with this gun uh, and it's never let me down. So, and uh, what I like about it, and besides it being accurate, powerful enough, not high power, but powerful enough, um, that accuracy, especially in a Springer, is not something to discount that I can shoot this gun accurately. Most of these Springers are in, intrinsically accurate, but for you as a shooter to get that accuracy out could be a challenge sometimes, again, because of that bi-directional recoil and the hole sensitivity and those things. This one I shoot well, and I especially shoot it well offhand. Um, it comes quickly to the shoulder. I find the side alignment just great on this. shooting a spring piston, I prefer a, a, a Diablo style, that's a wasted pellet, with a round, uh, a round dome and a medium or lighter pellet. Um, what I've got with me today are the Hunter Extremes, which are a specialized uh, type of a hollow point. They've got a, a cross hatch um, uh, mouth to them. Um, I've got the RWS Superdome. I noticed these shoot really well out of a lot of my Springers. Uh, and the, uh, the JSB um, Exacts, again, they shoot very well. So I like all of these. And I'll, I'll pull them out so you can have a look at the pellets uh, closer up as, as well. 22, same thing. I like the Superdomes, the Barracudas, JSBs. Uh, polymegs. Uh, I, I like these polymegs out of a Springer. They're lighter. Uh, they uh, they actually, in, at 30, 35 yards, have good accuracy out of most of my guns. Uh, and they give you that little extra penetration along with uh, a dump of terminal, uh, terminal energy. So I, I like that, uh, that a lot. Okay, now we've gone through some of the, the more general aspects of spring piston air guns. And uh, what I'd like to do now is start talking about the practicalities of using them for hunting. There are several good reasons to use spring piston air guns for hunting. As a matter of fact, as I, I promised at the beginning of the video, I'm going to tell you five of those uh, at the end of this, uh, this presentation, so stick around. One of the first things we should talk about is what can you hunt with a spring piston air gun? The simple answer is almost any small game or pest species. Spring piston air guns, depending on the caliber of the power output, are capable of taking everything from, from small vermin, small pests, up to medium-sized small game animals. The whole thing when you're hitting, hunting with a spring piston air gun, though, is that you've got to put your pellet exactly where you want it. Your shot placement has to be precise. Usually, the ability to take an animal is not, not as much related to the power as your ability to get the right shot placement. With any type of projectile of an air gun, you're not going to get a hydrostatic shock out of a springer anyway. So you're only going to kill the animal cleanly by putting the pellet right in a vital organ. With my spring piston air guns, I like to go out and, and do bird hunts for uh, pigeons and doves, um, starling, etc. But I also like to go out after rabbit and squirrel. Hunting jackrabbits with a spring piston air gun is a challenge. It's, it's almost like stalking a deer, but everything's scaled down. But it's a lot of fun. 
So I mentioned previously that I like uh, smaller calibers and lighter pellets in, in a spring piston air gun. That's because they're more matched to the type of power output uh, that the spring piston air guns produce. Uh, so I like these, these lighter pellets uh, and, and smaller calibers. So uh, what caliber to use for what? You know, there's an old expression that uh, I've quoted, but I don't actually fully believe, which is uh, 177 for feathers, 22 for fur. Uh, however, I think it has to do more with the range. What I mean by that is that at 30, uh, 30 yards, I think a uh, 177 is a fine rabbit gun or, or a, a pigeon gun. It doesn't matter if it's feather or fur, it's, it's the range. But if you go out to say 45 or 50 yards, which is really reaching with the Springer, uh, then I don't think the 177 is the right gun for either one of those. Uh, so I, I tend to match my uh, my caliber based on what the the game is and what the conditions are going to be. I don't believe you can have too much gun. Uh, and if you're in a, a situation, uh, for instance, like in the UK, where legal limit is 12 foot pound and under, and they can't go uh, uh, above that without a license, then there's a lot of sense for using a 177 rather than a 22. And that is that you get uh, the the higher velocities, flatter shooting, flatter trajectory with the 177 to 22. But over here, where we're not restricted in the power output of the guns, you can get a more powerful gun shooting 22, which will, will give you a flatter trajectory that also will carry further than a 177. And I don't see any disadvantages to that, really. Now let's go back and talk about range. Um, like I say, it, it, uh, inside of 30, 35 yards, 177, 22, both have good shooting characteristics, both have pretty good terminal performance. I have seen at times though with the 177 where you get what's called ice picking where you, you pass right through the animal because of the small surface area of the, uh, the, the pellet and the velocity it's being driven at and it, it picks right through them, doesn't transfer a lot of energy onto uh, to target. Um, and the animal might run a ways before dropping, if you have, even if you have a really well-placed shot. Um, but, but I say inside of that, it's really a matter of what you like better. Uh, if you're going to be going out uh, past that, though, then I think a larger caliber, a 22 or maybe even a 25, um, makes sense. The thing you have to worry about, though, or watch out for with a 25 is that. Um, that gun, besides having a, a trajectory, is going to is going to have a, a usually a kick. It's going to be hard to cock. It's going to be a large and heavy gun. So there's some other things to take into consideration. But I kind of think for myself, and and you have to say what your your own capabilities are. I think for myself, about. Uh, 45 yards uh, with most of my guns is about as far as I'll go. I've reached out further from time to time, but that, that's really it. And the other reason is that um, I'm usually shooting offhand, we're not shooting off sticks as often. I do sometimes, but not as, as often. Uh, so uh, again, because shooting offhand um, or, or supporting on my knee or leaning against a tree, I just tend to keep it in and, and I'm more conservative with it. Speaking about um, uh, about shooting uh, uh, and, and how I shoot, uh, the positions I normally use are, are standing offhand, uh, kneeling, um, sitting sometimes, almost never prone, mostly because uh, the majority of the animals that I hunt with spring piston air guns are in terrain that it's really not conducive to laying down. You'll end up getting bitten by something, stuck by something, stung by something. I find that leaning against a tree uh, lets me really lock in for those longer shots, for instance, when I'm out squirrel hunting. Uh, so those tend to be the positions I use most frequently uh, for shooting. It's a good thing when you're out practicing with your air guns and getting sighted in that you not just shoot uh, sitting on at a, a bench, that you actually uh, get up and use some of the same positions you use when you're in the field. There are a few ways to carry your guns. Uh, I've got um, some, some scabbards I can put my gun into, but to keep them ready, uh, having a sling, either a uh, with swivel studs mounted on the rifle on a conventional rifle um, sling, or to have a safari style sling that you can carry any gun in, essentially just loops over the barrel and 
or just slips over the uh, near the pistol grip of, of the rifle uh, and you take it take the rifle out of it when you get ready to shoot but um, you do want something while you're out there on these trips to um, to take the weight off the, uh, the gun and also let you free up your hands if you want to use your binoculars or you want to look in your your pack um, so for all those reasons having some way to carry the gun I think is uh, pretty essential now another key thing that I haven't really spoken a lot about so far is what I personally look for in my, my hunting rifles. Duration, I like a sporter style, I like a more compact gun. Um, but unlike a PCP where I like a really compact gun, there are again trade-offs with the spring piston. If you make that barrel too short, um, that gun can be very hard to cock. Um, but I, I tend to stay away from the big magnums just because they're heavy to carry. Uh, anyway, so I like a gun primarily 22 that's my favorite caliber uh, I've got 177s and I use them uh, but if I was going out to buy one right now I wouldn't buy a 177 those are ones that are more uh, I, they've been in my collection for years um, and 25 you know again I, I might but it wouldn't be my first gun still the 22 caliber would be my first gun uh, it, it performs well has good shooting characteristics good terminal performance uh, there are a lot of guns there are a lot of pellets everything is available so I, I tend to go with a, a 22 um, a medium-sized gun um, I've got a few guns in my collection that I like a lot you've seen some of them my my Beeman C1 uh, my uh, my Diana uh, Ntech my uh, Walther LG though that is kind of a heavy gun but I've had some big guns I've had some of my my R1 my Hatson some of my Hatsons have, have been larger guns the carnivore the 30 caliber I sometimes hunt with is is a, a monster in every respect both in terms of uh, the size of it but also the the uh, the capabilities of it the, the the hitting power but also you feel that gun when you shoot it rattles your teeth after a while um, I want to have uh, swivel studs uh, uh, on the gun typically um, I like a brake barrel I like a, uh, a wood stock but there's nothing wrong with synthetic that's more a matter of personal choice I like to top my gun with uh, a scope that's in the uh, 3 to 9 uh, uh, magnification range um, I, I usually don't set it much over uh, seven. Like I said, I'm, I'm normally hunting with within 50 yards, uh, so I, I really don't need high magnification um, with it. So uh, I also make sure that I use a a Springer rated scope on these, and I use a lot of scopes from uh, from Leapers Leapers UTG. Uh, they're a, a mid price to a lower price scope, but man, they take a knocking. They they stand up to just about anything you can throw at them, and they're, they're, uh, most of them are, um, are Springer rated. So that's one I use a, a lot. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think silencers do much good on, on spring piston air guns because you're not breaking the sound barrier anyway. Uh, and most of the sound that you hear is the spring noise, the mechanical noise uh, of, the, uh, of the gun. Um, but I do like having some type of muzzle swell that you can use as a, uh, a handle as you're, you're cocking the gun. So. Another question I get a lot is, should you use headshots or headshots only? Can you use body shots when you're hunting with a spring piston air gun? Um, again, my short answer is, uh, you know, headshots are preferable for a lot of reasons. I mean, they're, they're usually quicker. Even if the animal doesn't necessarily die faster, it goes down and doesn't move. And if you're hunting in thick cover or you're a, hunting squirrels up in the trees where you might lose them down a hole, uh, it's kind of nice to shut them down uh, immediately. So I like, I like headshots in that scenario. However, if you're in a place where it doesn't matter if the animal runs 10 yards before it drops, maybe 20 yards, um, jackrabbits out in the desert, I'll take body shots as well. They're, they're effective. But they're both going to kill the animal. I think they both do it ethically. I think they both do it cleanly. I don't think the fact that the animal runs 20 yards makes that much of a difference. I spotted two jacks, one sitting in a clearing yes. and the other laying at the base of a tree. I took the first rabbit with a headshot. and took the second one that had been lying in a scrape with a body shot. Which do I think is better? Take a look at these two shots side by side using the same gun and ammo at the same distance. And you decide.
at 11 and a half foot pound. It's a 35 here tuned by John and PA. This thing is really accurate. Good heart lung shot, 12 foot pound gun. Okay. There he goes. So this, uh, this video was five reasons to hunt with spring piston air guns. And I told you if you stuck around to the end, I was gonna tell you my opinion on what those five reasons were. Number one, they're fully self-contained. You don't need other charging bottles. You don't need adjunct gear to get lost or misplaced. You got the gun, pellets, you're ready to go. Number two, they're cost effective. If you look at, the, at a high-end Springer, German Springer, uh, or, or British Springer, they're going to cost less than the average price of a, a PCP. Plus, you don't need to spring for the fill bottle, the extra uh, hoses, connectors, all the other things you need to go along with it. So they're very cost effective. They're less expensive to get into, less expensive to run. Number three, once you've practiced and you've got your accuracy, these guns can be very accurate and they have adequate power for the type of game you're going to be hunting at the appropriate range. They're a good all-around hunting gun, and this is proven out by the fact that more game has been taken, arguably has been taken with spring piston air guns, than any other kind. Number four, they're rugged and they're reliable. It's very unusual that you have something go wrong with a spring piston air gun. Sure, things can go wrong. You can have uh, uh, leaks develop, you can have springs fracture, springs take a set. There are things that can happen, but as a rule, these guns are very rugged, very reliable. I've got, well, the Beeman C1 that you saw, I've been shooting that for 30 years and have not had a problem at all with it. Number five, shooting a Springer will make you a better marksman. If you've got your technique down so you're consistent and accurate with your Springer, you can shoot almost anything, I assure you. And I'll give you a bonus six. They're just fun. That's why I've never quit shooting them. With all the guns I have, I still get a kick of going out with nothing but this brake barrel air gun, some pellets to do a squirrel or a rabbit hunt. It's a blast. In my mind, it's really the, the very essence of, of air gun hunting. Spring piston air guns just to me bring me back to where I got started and I love them. Well, I hope this content is something that you'd like to see. As I, as I mentioned at the start, um, the, uh, the polls I've done, the mail I get are asking for a lot of Springer, uh, Springer uh, material and this is just a start. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to hunt with Springers a lot this year, and I'll be bringing you a lot of video with a lot of different spring piston air guns. Uh, and so uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Give it a share. I really appreciate your support, and we'll see you next video.